If I wanted to describe myself in three words, I think unique, quirky, and a dreamer. Closely, but there's one just inside the cubby. Be a perfect boss. But the flick still comes perfectly out for Annie Drove. Annie on the way to find an ace. There's the kill, there's the ace, and Annie gets it done. My name is Annie Roberts. I go by Annie Dro in game. I'm 24 years old and I was born in Michigan. The first competitive game that I got into seriously was probably Overwatch. I started in like season one and I got top 500 in season one. I had to take a couple breaks from the game, but I ended up coming back to it in like season four, got GM, got top 500. And from there, that's when I had kind of like thought about streaming my gameplay a little bit because I was playing the game like every day for a while so I'm like why don't I just like try streaming. Like, I told my friends you know and so I'd have like maybe two or three viewers and I got the idea to start doing like charity streams specifically for like LGBT causes and like trans causes. I started to like raise just like you know a little bit of money but uh, to me raising like a hundred dollars when I only had like three viewers was like really big to me. And eventually a lot of people like started to come by and just like check me out. And that was like a big accomplishment to me because I, I didn't really get into streaming with the perspective that I would, you know, take off and like be super famous or anything. And I just was doing it for fun. So it was really cool to have people want to watch me and they were coming back and telling their friends about me, so. I heard about Project A when Riot had their like showcase. I had like a dying love for Overwatch and was kind of like looking to like swap games. It had like abilities, it had like good gunplay, and I had played a bit of Counter Strike as like a kid too, so that kind of appealed to me a ton. And I. I think I signed up for the beta and it just the way Riot presented it too I felt like it had a really good like pro future too like I saw that as like an opportunity of like hey if I wanted to compete in any game this is the game to do it in and if I can prove myself to like top players then I can definitely compete in this game. One enemy remaining. Push together. Oh, I got a double. After a little bit of playing and streaming the game, I started to see like a lot of growth in my stream, and I started to like kind of express that I was like looking to compete with like teams and everything, and I was like open to offers, and I was really like willing and able to grind through tier three and tier two to like eventually, hopefully make it to tier one one day. And I got a DM from a girl named Mel. I was making a team. I was looking for a team for like this first girl tournament, but I was talking to Jazzy and I'm like, Jazz, do you know anyone that's like insane at the game? Like, I'm just looking for anyone. And she said, oh yeah, this girl that I'm playing with is Annie Dro and she's a streamer. I'm like, okay, she's a streamer. I look her up, I go on Twitch, and I was watching, she had an insane raise. She was really confident in all her plays, and she was like the same rank as me. She was like a mortal. She was like grinding for Radiant, essentially. So uh, so I got in contact with her through Jazzy, and I'm like, hey, do you want to play in this tournament? And it was me, Miss Harvey, Jazzy, and Annie Drew. Even though it's like only a girls tournament, and I didn't really like foresee a future where I was only gonna play on like girls teams, I definitely thought this was like a great starting point to, you know, play with people, get team experience and everything that can transfer. And I just remember playing with her and she just had like a really good vibe and we played pretty well against like the team in the tournament that was considered the best. I just had a lot of fun doing it and I really liked the environment and I really liked the girls that I was playing with and so we decided to stick together and pick up a couple other girls and that is the early stages of Magical. So I first met Annie for my tryout for Magical. Um, that was my first interaction with her. I honestly was pretty intimidated by her. Like she was better than me and I was kind of scared. My first impression of Annie was like, this is like the biggest troll that I've ever met. It was me, Mel, Jazzy, and we ended up picking up Pat, Sumi, and 
Alexis at a later date. Yeah, and everyone really clicked. Like everyone was really nice to each other and we all had a lot of fun and made a lot of jokes for my tryouts and we kind of just knew that this is the team that we wanted. We just worked really well together and we were all kind of like, we had similar goals in the sense that we wanted this as like team experience to hopefully move on to tier two and tier one teams one day. So we entered like one charity tournament that I think we got first place in, which was like really good motivation for us to be like, wow, like, you know, we're like an all girl team and we just, you know, even though it's only a charity tournament, we just beat all of these boys teams like and got first place. And that was pretty crazy to us. I think that was like the early stages of like, almost like the fire within us to like compete more. That was when Riot announced their $50,000 like, girls tournament and we were like, we need to play in this. Like we need to, we need to literally get first place in this and like prove that, you know, we're, we're raising the bar. Like we're gonna raise the bar and we're gonna show everybody like a standard that like teams should strive for. To get a pick off is a nice solid 2k for Magical Match Point is in action here. The showstopper comes out, doesn't manage to get anything in lamps, but they do know that the entirety of Magical is there. Rolling Thunder is going to come out as well, but despite the Rolling Thunder, Magical are able to clean up. They get the last two frags. <laughs> They're gonna get the defuse if they stop trolling. But I remember I was playing Raze and I like threw a satchel on the bomb because I was just like throwing like random abilities and whatnot. And Mel started diffusing and I blew it up on her, which like pushed her off the bomb. We are 12-11, we get a perfect retake, I hop on the bomb, and she satchels me before I think I even got it to half. And I had a mini panic attack because you know your adrenaline's pumping? And I was like, dude, I don't know if I have enough time to defuse the bomb. And she just satcheled me off like a ranked troll. And there's plenty of time left, there's probably like, you know, 10 seconds left. And so we were like chilling, but... You know, she yelled at me. She's like, Annie, don't just stop. Like, please don't do that. At the time, I just remember feeling so scared that we weren't able to win the game. Because that, that was traumatic. That was trauma bonding. That was terrifying. That gave me trauma. That um, that traumatized me. Now, I every time I diffuse, I just hold four, like, so intently. Like, there's so much pressure on my four key when I diffuse because of that. Once we won that, uh, that was when things kind of, like, blew up for us. We. Got a lot of publicity from doing that. Um, we had a lot of like tier one orgs hit us up and um, pretty much almost every single tier one org in the scene right now probably were in our DMs asking about, you know, if we wanted to like join their organization and be like an academy team or something. And so we had a lot of time to scout around and like really pick and choose and um, talk to a lot of orgs and find the best one, which ended up being Cloud9 for us. So I was a big fan of Cloud9 back in the day, so to be able to like get an offer from the org was just like very like mind blowing to me and being like, look, like we made it, you know, into the here. So. I started transitioning pretty much during college. I had gotten like HRT, hormone replacement therapy, um, and that was like a pretty big step for me to, um, I guess, like start coming out to like my family, which it didn't go well in the beginning, but I think they really saw that I started to be a lot more like healthier with myself, a lot happier and a lot more motivated and successful. And they saw that happiness within me and they, you know, they switched and they really, really supported me. And I felt, I felt really relieved um, and also just very happy to, I guess, like be a part of my family. And um, I think my friends helped me a lot too. Um, they, I, despite like not really like looking or like sounding like feminine in any way, I just like asked them if they would call me, you know, Annie. And they were all like, oh yeah, of course. And eventually um, when I first started streaming, that was like a big way for me to push myself a little bit because um, that was pretty much when I started just presenting full time, um, like femme and like having people address me as like she, her and like Annie and streaming. Um, was like a big part of, I guess, like reaching my confidence and like also like being very authentic to who I wanted to be and everything. Uh, for sure, I faced a lot of transphobia. Um, like I had, you know, hair that was like this short and everything and I had like a really deep voice. And so when people would get in my games and like Overwatch, they would see like my name's like Annie, you know, like that was just my in-game name. And 
You know, they would be just very transphobic to me. They'd be like, you don't sound like a girl. Like, you don't look like a girl. They'd come in my stream and like, just be very transphobic. But um, like to me, that wasn't like, I, I kind of like expected that. And that was kind of like one of the things that like, you know, before I transitioned, like I wrote down like a huge list of like the pros and cons of like doing both, you know, and like, I, I was definitely well aware that people were going to be very, very transphobic towards me. Um, but, I mean, it just didn't outweigh the pros, which were, you know, I get to like live as who I want to be and like um, how I want to be like perceived in the world. And um, that didn't really like get me down. It definitely affects you because you're like, maybe, maybe this, maybe I'm not like, you know, worth it or whatnot. But, um, at the same time, I feel like I also got a lot of support too. Um, I had a pretty good support from my stream. I um, definitely from like friends and like other, I guess like content creators in Overwatch, they started to show a lot of support towards me. And they would still address me with like she, her pronouns, even though they knew what I looked like, they knew what I sounded like. And to me, that was just like, I guess um, a lot of motivation to, you know, keep going. Annie. Um, I just want you to know, and you know this because I message you uh, all the time about this, but I'm really proud of you. Uh, I'm so glad of everything we've achieved. I know you've been through a lot, um, us and as a team. I'm just really proud of you, and I can't ask for a better teammate. You're awesome. I love you. I love having you as a teammate. And uh, yeah, I just love the hell out of you. <laughs> Finds one, makes one for herself. This kill is strange. She has the heal coming through the Viper's Pit. Just in the middle of, of mid around Boiler Annie with the shock darts gets to the right click from the classic a third. C9 are unstoppable. It just doesn't matter. Annie gets a fourth. And Annie is gonna get that ace. I'm playing the high ground. And I don't know if they can get back into that Viper's Pit. The dash on through, but Annie's ready for it. KP playing aggressive. They will take down the D opposing. Viper and Annie on the way to find an ace, a 1v1 situation to get it done. The snake fight to work around. There's the kill, there's the ace, and Annie gets it done. Fun. Annie's gonna try to move in closely, but there's one just inside the cubby. There's gonna be a perfect crossfire set. But the flick still comes perfectly out for Annie Drill. play from Annie as she's created a 1v1! I can't believe it, she's done it! Won't be successful up to KP once again. One versus two to keep them and their chances alive, but it's not. Their chances are gone and once again, Cloud9 White are your Game Changers champions. Um, I definitely get DMs like every day about, you know, people saying that I've helped them in a lot of ways feel com more comfortable with themselves um, since they have like someone to look up to, someone who's like happy and successful and like obviously like happiness is just kind of like a brief state of mind. It's never like, you know, I'm happy 100% of the time. Like there's definitely times I struggle still, but just the ability to be happy like some of the time is like definitely worth working for.